I peered in beyond a shadow last night. A markedly tortured one, cast by this world's torrential terror and malcontent. It was once the day had ended that I beckoned it forth, late into the dead hour. Soon it met with me and poured over my trembling eyelids, lulling me into a supine form. Painting me the pitch of black, the veil draped down around me, and I, the one alone, dared to fold it away. Through tattered threads, my mind's eye struggled open, and broke away the crusty dregs which had cemented it for many ages, rolled forward, and examined the world beyond the shadow. Stupefied, confused, and off course, I lost all orientation. My senses seemed to dissolve, and blindly, my inner eye was obfuscated from anything of a corporal nature. Wrought with a sense of muddled doom and smoldering horror, I was impelled to wrench the shroud shut again. I proposed the impulse to my extended arm, but it remained taut and unwavering, as if it was clenched tight by a force that begged a witness. For after a time, when my mind's eye was adjusted, I then reckoned how perverse it was for the heart of a shadow to be so bleakly bright. Glinting and gleaming, it slowly took form from a bed of ashes, bellowing up from a filthy gray field of soot and grime. Flaming specters began to loom forth from the haze. I shuddered beneath the shroud as the winds began to howl. With each gust of conflagration, so too was uplifted the tone of the howl. Growling higher and deafening, it inundated the scene. Beyond the shadow, I alone saw a city. It stood amassed behind the shifting dunes of ash and acrid green smoke, composed of charred hunks of what could only be likened to the dwellings which living souls should inhabit. In this vision beyond the shadow, there was no divine sun in the sky. The life-giving light of the world did not give way to the luminosity which danced upon this plain before me. Instead were the fires. An electric hue hugged the land all around and glimmered in the twilight it brought. My inner eye reeled with the madness it was viewing, then came into frame the true dread of this nameless place beyond the shadow. For in the transfiguring tides of the ashy meadow crawled the wretched ones. In agony they clawed up to columns of cascading vapors which grew high above them. They were hideous things, lumbering. They were making a damned exodus from the scorched city that lay crumbling at their backs. They had spines which contorted and drooped, flesh with pustules which wept and burst with glowing fluid, heads with sunken crypts where eyes should sit, fused limbs that violently lunged into the heaps of ash which engulfed the great many of them. My mind's eye dilated at the atrocity it beheld. The mob meandered across the plain towards me, and I, unfit to move behind the blackened veil, shuddered uncontrollably. I needed to be released now. I had been the witness desired of me to be. I had served as the bearer for the understanding of something far deeper than what my soul could burden. Even then, as I lamented, the blind ones teetered towards me. It seemed now as if they, in union, 
were congregating toward the very place where I observed them. I begged for my inner eye to be shut, but still it remained open. I screamed for reprieve, but my pleas were lost to the winds around me. The howling streams of flame fueled decimation. Almost very nearly upon me, the crippled wretches broke my soul then. The screaming air which permeated my essence, which had rendered me disordered upon my entry to this place, this place beyond the shadow, emanated not from the obliteration itself, but from the huddled forms which stood around me then gawking with unseeing eyes, and reaching forth with melted stumps, charred to the bone, the denizens of the burning city howled. The unearthly noise droned louder and louder still until I alone tore down the veil which I had dared to hold aloft. My mind's eye closed and the shroud receded until it fell away into the glowing dawn outside my window. The flames retreated, the jagged city fell back into the dunes of ash, the green smoke lifted, and the damned ghouls, the terrible creatures, even they faded back into the corners of persistent memory. But the howling remains. <laughs>